This is going to be your guide to raiding in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So I've done a lot of raids, and I'm in a pretty good position right now. I can solo most 5-star raids, I can solo 6-star raids on occasion, and I just have a really good feel on which raids you should be doing, how to get more raids, and all of that other fun stuff. So that is mostly what this video is going to cover. If you enjoy it, or have helped take you out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. Now, if you're currently struggling with 5-star raids, that's a problem because it tells me you have not been watching my videos since everything kind of folds in with this game. That you need to get experience to get your Pokemon high level, you need to utilize money to buy the items to make them competitive, and then everything just kind of falls into place. So your goal is getting a level 100 Pokemon. Then your goal is going to be EV training it, bottle capping it, optimizing it with really good items, and taking on this in-game content. I think a really good way of looking at raids is that it's like the battle tower. Initially, you're kinda gonna get stomped and you need to make legitimate competitive Pokemon or else it's just too much of a challenge for you at some point or it's going to be very difficult. So once you get your first couple of competitive Pokemon, then you can do 5 star raids easier, that gives you more resources and it makes it even easier to do more 5 star raids. So that's kind of the snowballing and how it goes, how it comes into play, which is why all of this is very important. So if you're wondering, hey, how did you get another Koridon and why is it so strong? Check out the description, check out the playlist, get yourself caught up, and then the game gets a lot easier. So yeah, Koridon, huge carry, but it can't handle all of the Pokemon in the game. And that's kind of what we're going to be building up towards is that right now I just have a Quaquavel and a Koridon, so I can't clear out everything on the map. But fortunately, you don't have to. Time skipping doesn't seem to have any negative side effects. I've been hesitant to time skip, not because it's against the rules or anything. The game freely allows you to do it. And even Pokemon Sword and Shield, it was fine. But, you know, sometimes there's a 24-hour lockout, no, like, heavy or major penalties. So I didn't want to time skip, lock myself out for 24 hours while I'm trying to make content, and then have a really bad time. But it resets all the raids. It resets the auctions over here in... Porto Miranda, and it also resets the mass outbreaks. I haven't noticed any problems, so tentative seems ite, and then you can just kind of carry on that way. So depending on if you've like cleared out all the possible raids, you use this, you reset, and it even allows you to like do six star raids by uh, doing the time reset. So I did a six star raid, reset, did another one, reset, and it was completely fine. So I think that's something pretty good to know for the guide, and as long as you didn't pick Fue Coco, your starters should be pretty competent. Skeledurge is aight, but it just kind of seems like if you have Meowskerita's critting crazy high damage move, as well as Quaquavel's Aqua Step, and you're just like stacking speed and doing tons of damage, and you have like a choice item to synergize with that Pokemon, it's going to be pretty strong. Maybe Skeledurge is fine, I just haven't had too much experience with it. So... As for the raids you should be participating in, 5 star raids, if you can do them, just do them. Even if it like comes down to the wire, the rewards seem pretty good. 4 star raids, also worth doing. Unfortunately, I didn't one shot this. Now sometimes you can just one shot 4 star raids, which is why it's really good to have Pokemon that are just stacked, have super effectives, and then you can just kind of take on anything, but we pour through this raid and we're going to get a decent amount of rewards. So it's about getting more experience, more items to sell for money, more competitive items, and then it just kind of keeps on stacking. So you should just always be out there doing raids. Now as for three star raids, they're worth it if you're going for that typing. Because the Terra Shards, you, can, you need 50 of them. Now my gut feeling on good Terra Shards are going to be normal, Poison, Steel, Fairy, maybe Dragon to like keep on boosting for all that kind of damage. So if you find one of those and it's a 3 star, just do it for the shards. Also, whatever Pokemon you're going for. For all I know, you're looking for an electric type Wooper right now. So that means you should encounter all of these raids because it just might have the Pokemon you're looking for and it's going to be a good competitive step. So my competitive guide talked about it a lot and also the other guides talking about it a lot. A big thing about Terra Raids is not just the rewards, but the Pokemon that you get from them because, oh, it can just spit out a Pokemon that only needs one bottle cap and some EVs and you're pretty much competitively ready. Now currently, I'm really conflicted on 6 star raids. The rewards don't really seem that great. It seems like there's just a chance of getting an ability patch and maybe slightly better competitive item drop rates. 
But whenever I do it, sometimes it's a slog. Sometimes it's multiple resets. Uh, you go into online lobbies and the players are just not good. So it could just waste more time than it's worth. Really, if you need the ability patch, that kind of seems like the only reason to be doing six star raids. Other than that, five star just seem like they're better time per reward per Pokemon. Uh, again, unless it is like, oh, I've been desperately needing this combination of Pokemon and Terra type. And unfortunately, it's locked behind a six star raid. So I kind of have to do it then that's when it's worth doing it. So you can do them, but it's not something you, you should seek out. It's not like, oh, I have to do every six-star raid. Um, if you go online and do some, and like people get better at doing them online, then it might be a little all right worth it. But overall, five stars are just the most consistent, quickest, and have great rewards. And speaking of online raids, oh man, I don't know what to say about online raids right now sometimes they seem worth it most of the time they don't seem worth it i am going to see if i can jump into this as soon as possible so this is also sometimes a problem that you have a very hard time getting into raids especially very desirable raids like rock steel dragon type pokemon water types for ride on like those are going to get filled up really quick because if you have the legendary pokemon it's going to be very easy to defeat and collect the rewards sometimes you just get timed out and then you never get a chance to join it i don't have a problem with that because there's so many spaces and it is like nintendo online more so than game freak programming but when you get in that's when i feel the experience goes downhill quick because there's players that are bringing way too under level pokemon like level 30s and 40s into five and six star raids and immediately getting one shot so the problem is terra raid etiquette i feel like a good rule of thumb is that if you can't complete the raid by yourself or like you need that extra 10 20 percent of real people to get it done then don't join the raid because you will be way too much of a detriment wow this seems to, yeah the ice gengar five star very desirable people really want in on that and it definitely makes sense so also if you want to be benevolent you can host a raid as well it just doesn't seem worth it in most scenarios but it seems like we're we're doing pretty good right here the person's made it far enough in the game to have Vax Caliber. I imagine their starter isn't just like freshly evolved or something. And because it's a ice type and we have Karidon, we're just going to one shot it pretty much on collision course anyways. So sometimes like you can have good experiences with the online. And if you need to be bailed out, then you can host it as long as you're competitive within that raid. Like, if you just know, like, yeah, I'm good enough to do it, but if someone else brought me ride on, or I don't have, like, I, currently, I just have Quaquavel and Karidon, which means a heavy physical tank can be problematic, but if someone brings special Pokemon, then we're, we're going to be able to clear that out a lot faster. So, if you know you can't fully contribute, don't play stupid. That's the biggest problem. There's people that are out there, like, getting one shot, they're doing three damage, cheer. Cheering on stronger players is the pro tip. You don't have to be the hero when you've got level 40 Pokemon and you're trying to leech some extra large candies. But the problem is the Pokemon community is immensely toxic and what I learned from Pokemon Unite, very bad at video games. So they're not going to know these things. Like you just put all of your candies in, before you do a raid, put all the candies that you have into your strongest Pokemon to at least not die immediately. And then cheer on, like if someone's status that's actually trying to carry, that's when you cheer, cheer to heal them, or give them defense boost, or give them offensive boost. At the very start, your first action should be cheering for an offensive boost so those other people can, can get some power in if you're the one that doesn't have a legendary Pokemon. Or you know you don't have a level 100. And I mentioned this in my beginner guide, but it's probably worth putting into the raid guide. So if you run out to a higher level area and catch a Pokemon that is disobedient, it will obey you inside of raids. So that's just good knowledge to have to bring a higher level Pokemon into a raid to help out with like 3, 4 star, or taking out 2 star raids really quickly and getting more candies to then make your main Pokemon stronger. So that's why the online etiquette is hard, because to a degree... You know, if you don't get too many leechers, or you don't have someone that's so incompetent they drag the entire party down, then yeah, you can actually help someone out. You know, they join in, they do a higher level raid than they're supposed to, now they get extra candies and resources, and it saves them, like, a potential hour or even more of game time, because they just got that little boost that pushes them into the next step of gameplay. Like, there is the angle that with enough time, people will catch up a little better, but that's still going to take time. That's still going to take applying all of this kind of stuff 
and also there's always going to be like newer players players that play slower than others that are still going to be like clogging up the online my experience has been like 50 50 half good half bad but if i'm out soloing for myself then it just kind of seems like a detriment to my gameplay and it doesn't even help the person that's leech leeching if we all lose so it I don't know, online's kind of mixed. It, I guess go out and try it every once in a while. If suddenly it, if it like improves to, oh, 70% of my six star raids are doable, then maybe it's better. And I think there's just a reality check part to this, which Zoomers and a lot of people in 2022 can't handle, is that if you can't do the content, that means you can't, like you're not there yet. You need to participate more in the game until you're more comfortable. You have the legendary Pokemon, you've beaten the game. That's, that's really it. If you haven't fully beaten the game and seen the credits, you shouldn't be doing in-game content. Yes, this helps you get to that in-game content, but you don't need to go online to beat the game. And again, if you go to my gods, you can beat the story really easily. You can do four-star raids and just power into like level 80 Pokemon and then sweep the floor with the in-game. Done. Easy. And on the stubbornness angle, you need more than just one or two Pokemon. You need many different Pokemon to cover for all the Terra type combinations as well as base type combinations that you're going to encounter. And that's where you can use a tool like Pokemon Showdown to kind of figure out the next Pokemon you need to make. So I have Coridon and I have Quaquaval. I am very, very weak against Fairy type Pokemon and I'm also really lacking when it comes to some super matchups. You can also use a type coverage checker to kind of fill in the Pokemon that you already have to see what weaknesses you need to cover for. So Makio has a pretty good one that's kind of filling out and really helping with understanding how to be strong and competitive in Generation 9. So between my Coridon and my Quaquaval, we are just normal effective against Bug, Electric, Fairy, and stuff like that. And since we are very weak to fairy defensively, a steel or a poison type Pokemon will be really nice. Now, looking at steel, we already hit ice and rock super effective. So poison is probably going to be the way to go. Just kind of make it easier to do certain raids. So we can search by poison typing. And really the name of the game is damage. So we need to adjust this to generation 9 where we learn that there's not a lot of good poison type Pokemon to use. It's Reverum, but 119 and not incredible coverage and it slows itself on signature move usage. Uh, let's try Steel. Ooh, King Gambit and Scizor. I think Scizor might be it. You go Choice Band, Technician, Bullet Punch, just spam, spam, spam on that priority. And maybe that's actually pretty good. King Gambit also pretty durable. Like you need a mix of offense and durability so you don't immediately get destroyed. So yeah, King Gamma could also be pretty good with some very powerful hits. You're not, you're not really getting anything out of the Supreme Overlord, but you do have your stats reduced fairly often. So Defiant could also come in. So I think like King Gamut would be a pretty good add to the team. Also adds dark coverage, so we could just use that and it has a signature move now that would just add another physical pokemon to the roster so i'd have to consider like a hard-hitting crazy special sweeper to kind of add into the mix but also worst case scenario you just time skip if again there's nothing else for you to clear and that should kind of round it out for clearing out terror raids uh really the guide is get good this is a competitive feature and you need to accept and understand that you can't just dive into the end game of any game. I guess because of all the hacking and all the toxicity in Pokemon, people just want everything handed to them, but you actually have to play the game and earn your things in Pokemon. It might feel weird, but that's just the reality of it. You need to get the items, you need to get the resources, you need to get the money, and then you actually just need to make strong Pokemon to take on the end game strong content. And if you're not there, that means you need to train more as a Pokemon trainer. It's, it's that simple. That's why, like, making this guide was kind of weird. And making a lot of Pokemon Sword and Shield guides is kind of get Or not Sword and Shield. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet guides is getting weird because it's all the same thing. You need... It, it all goes into competitive, and then all the pieces are... You need the money to do the raids to get the items to make the competitive Pokemon. The competitive Pokemon to do the raids to get more money. To make more competitive Pokemon. To get more experience to get more competitive Pokemon. It's just a giant gameplay loop. I personally love it as a competitive player... But people want the easy mode. People want everything handed to them. And this game, another thing I like about it, that's not quite that straightforward. So you just have to know Pokemon, apply it, and then 
that's it. These aren't impossible raids. Some of the six stars, kind of, and we'll see how that Charizard raid goes in some of the other events. But this is this is a very obtainable m feature that just takes the basics of Pokemon. So, not much else to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.